Welcome for to the after lunch session. Yay. Don't fall asleep. Make, what? Don't fall asleep on us. Don't fall asleep. We were thinking about having nap time because we're like, yeah, everyone's going to be tired. Let's turn down the lights. Have a nice few moments. But we'll go ahead and have a presentation instead. So this is our panel, Making Drupal Meetups and Events Rock. And we are now going to introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Karen Cassio, tech girl geek. <laughs> and I'm not like, liking hearing myself talk right now. <laughs> um, on IRC, Facebook, pretty much everywhere, Twitter. So, um, and this is the rest of my panel. I'm Ash Dryden. I'm Ash Dryden pretty much everywhere on the internet. I live in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm mostly a conference and a, like larger event organizer. I helped with DrupalCon Chicago. Uh, I did the Midwest Developer Summit last year uh, and Drupal Camp Wisconsin. I'm Scott Reinen. Uh, I'm from Denver and I organize one of the three meetups in Denver and I also help maintain groups.drupal.org. So I, that exposes me to a lot of what the other people around the world are doing. Hello, I'm Mike Anello. I'm one of the organizers of the Florida Drupal Users Group. Um, and we're kind of unique where we're a pretty big state and we have a lot of individual meetups in different geographic areas of the state. But um, we also tend to act as one giant group as well, which has its challenges. So. I'm Eric Baldwin, at Cloud9 on Twitter, Bladwin everywhere else, thanks to this guy misspelling my name. Uh, I'm originally from Florida. Uh, we pioneered the Florida Drupal Group in 2008. Um, since then, my business partner in the crowd and I have uh, decided to travel around the world to different Drupal communities. So my home is basically just Earth at this point, until Mars can have breathable air. Um, and Wi-Fi, because that's so important. Um, but I'm just a digital nomad, so Drupal is my life. My life is Drupal. I'm actually also from Denver, <laughs> and I do and I um, coordinate Drupal ladder meetups. I forgot that part of the details, so we will start talking. So, why is it super important to talk about this? Who was doing that? Uh, you are. Because it is very important to talk about this. Um, Drupal is the com community that makes it up. What? <laughs> um, so, okay. So, I'm so stop being nervous right here. The, commu the Drupal community, what's the biggest saying in Drupal? Come for the code, stay for the community. The community is what, I mean, you ask anybody, why are they here? It's awesome code, but the community rocks. What makes the community? It's not just Drupal cons. If we only got together once a year, once every two times on Kanawa, we're looking at three to four times a year at Drupal cons, this community would not be strong. The strength behind the community is all the code that's going behind the community. It's all the meetups that are happening around the world for people to collaborate and talk. I mean, how many communities can you, I have a problem with my work, let me talk to all my competitors and see how they're doing the same work. This is our community, and we get, like to get together, and we like to talk about it, and we like to sometimes have beers or sodas or whatever. And we want to talk about how can you make your meetups in your area stronger, and by virtue of that, making your um, community stronger, and our whole community as a whole stronger. Um, just to add a little to that, the community is also, I, th I think come for the code, stay the for the community is in many cases a little backwards. I think a lot of people, the first interaction they have with Drupal is with the community. So it's our first chance to show people how awesome Drupal is by showing them how awesome the community is. Also, a quick um, housekeeping notes we've got to say. We will have question and answers and we want to hear from you guys how you're doing things, but we're going to hold those to the end. So we're going to talk first and then we're going to move forward. So so just to stay on this for one second, you know, just how a church for, for most religions, you know, it's not the building that's the church, it's the community, the people that make it up, you know, without the community here, you know, the strength of the community directly correlates to the strength of the events that you have. So if you have a strong community, you're gonna have strong events and your strong events are gonna empower your community to go out and build itself. So that's what we're gonna try to help you do today. 
So hopefully many of you or most of you in the room went to our survey and took our survey and we gathered information about Drupal as a whole, the Drupal community as a whole, and how meetups mm -hmm. are working for them with our survey. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk about this. So, you know, we designed the survey to be super fast. Um, I think it's six or seven questions total. Um, you know, some of the numbers up there. We designed it so it didn't have to be answered by organizers. We wanted anybody to go and, and check it out. Um, turns out we had 45% of the people were organizers. And as we go through each topic today, there's kind of a, a data point from from that as well. Um, but it, it kind of, the reason we wanted to do it is because we wanted to be coming from a place of fact, <laughs> saying we know this, but how can we make this better? So um, I think the survey is still open right now, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So after this talk, um, if you haven't taken it, we you know, definitely encourage you to, you know, just give us some more data and, you know, we'll keep this going. Yeah, we're gonna have, a, we're gonna have information for you guys so that people can reference back to this ongoing. So local communities, as I was saying, are a microcosm of the larger community. Who's talking to this? Well, if you go to the next slide, then Ash can talk about So one of the things that's really important to me as an organizer is that we're making sure that we're including uh, all the people in the community. Um, many uh, events and meetups have a harder time um, attracting uh, diverse people, especially because we tend to know people that are like us. So if we're going to other meetups and talking about the fact that we do Drupal and you know you should come to this meetup, it tends to be, bring, be, be bringing in a lot of people that are like us. Um, and a sign of a really healthy community is one that actually reflects the larger community. So if you live in an area that has a very large Hispanic population, you should expect that the percentage of uh, Hispanic folks that are coming to your meetup will be about the same percentage. And if that's not the case, then you need to figure out ways to reach out to that community and kind of figure out how to be more inclusive. Um, I think that uh, this is probably the most diverse DrupalCon that I've ever seen uh, over the, about the past um, three or four years. I've been very happy to see um, the amount of diverse, the amount of visible diversity that we have. So I know that we're doing a much better job of reaching out to uh, a lot of different communities um, to bring a lot of different kinds of people in. Um, but it's something that we need to focus on a lot more when it comes to our local communities as well. So we asked um, on the survey how diverse um, the meetup is. Uh, people's meetups are. And um, I was really surprised by these results, actually, that a lot of people felt that uh, their meetups reflected the population as a whole. Right, this is relative to your local geographic area. Correct. Right? So, I, we actually got, I got one data point this morning about DrupalCon um, that it's 18% women this year, which is higher than Ooh, it has been in the that's past. That's so. a whole percentage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. That's you. That's me. Again. Yeah, that's you. Again. Again, Neon. <laughs> Putting on a panel, you wouldn't have to talk. Except to get us started. We'll roll. <laughs> so, attracting attendees. How do you get attendees to your um, to your meetups? Um, there's a lot of different ways, and we've gone through stats. We found out people are using. It seems like primarily Meetup.com. Um, is most people know. Go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Yeah. The notes are on this slide. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, G -d 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 Groups.drupal.org is obviously over primarily. I thought I actually remember the other way around it. And meetup.com is coming in second. Um, and then we actually had one place that's actually doing print ads, which was kind of amazing to me. I didn't know anyone actually used print anymore. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got mail lists, social media, and other. Um, I know in Denver we try to do, we mostly do meetup.com and GDO, GDO, and then many of us try to tweet in and Facebook it to try to keep, keep the words going. I thought this was kind of surprising that meetup had such a high percentage. I mean, this is something that we actually don't do yet in Florida, um, but, you know, since I've seen these results, you know, a few weeks ago, it's definitely something we're going to be starting. But the other one was social media. Uh, it's easy, you know, for individuals to like tweet that a meetup's happening. One thing that we do do in Florida is, um, 
I actually use Hootsuite, which has a bunch of kind of cool capability, um, two of them being that you can post to multiple social media um, sites at once, as well as schedule uh, tweets and posts in advance. So whenever I schedule a meetup in my local area, you know, I post it on GDO, and then I go right into Hootsuite, and I, you know, I plan out you know, three or four tweets you know, for the next couple of weeks leading up to the meetup mm -hmm. that will automatically go to Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and there's somewhere else, LinkedIn. Yes? Would you spell that? Hoot Hootsuite. Yeah, like, like an a, owl like an and owl. a office park. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and the other the other important thing to remember is that um, your audience doesn't all reside on GDO. People who are new to this community don't necessarily know that GDO exists. There are a lot of people that go to get, go to meetup.com and they'll say, "I just want a technology meetup. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to meet other technologists that are in my area." And you'll get actually a lot of new members that way. And they might only uh, ever come once or twice just because they come and realize it's it's not necessarily for them, but it's important to give people kind of the opportunity to come and see if this is a community that they would be interested in, if Drupal is something that they would be interested in. So I would really recommend um, putting the word out in as many different places as possible. Um, ask people, um, especially um, because our community is so dominated by one specific demographic, white straight men, ask people in your community that come to your meetups that don't fit in that group to also do things like retweet that. Because we tend to know people that are more like us, you can actually reach a much larger, more diverse audience by having as many people participate in um, spreading that message as possible. Right. One thing to add about Meetup and other tech events, you know, people go to Meetup and search for, well, HTML5. Uh, one of the things you can do as a community organizer or, you know, a Meetup organizer for Drupal is go to these other events for other technologies, introduce yourself and say, hey, yeah, we utilize this in our CMS and, and our community. So why don't you come check out our event, you know, see how you can get involved and help out. Um, you know, Meetup kind of does that really well, uh, interaction between groups. Uh, another way of looking at it is when you are, want to market your event, you can market basically to two large groups of people. People already in the community who you want to tell that, hey, there's a Meetup and they're kind of, you know, they'll come regardless. They'll, hear, they'll see the bat signal. And then people outside of the Drupal community who are Drupal curious, you know, or people who might, you know, be interested in... <laughs> Did you just coin that? No, I've heard that. No, I, def, I didn't make that up, so don't give me credit for that. Um, no, but people who might be looking for a new content management system, or you know, people who are really into HTML and CSS, or you know, some one of these parallel technologies that revolves around the web. I mean, these are people who we want to invite to our community. I'm a big believer that, you know, I love the, our local community right now and seeing all the familiar faces, but I like seeing fresh faces because they bring fresh ideas and new energy and. That's the lifeblood of any community. It, it's like when you just talk about a, an organization or even a company, you know, investors always want to see growth. You always want to see growth. You know? So it's the same thing with a community. You always want to be growing your community in some way. Yeah, and I mean, I got into Drupal seven or eight years ago because somebody presented it at a bar camp. So, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily even have to be a meetup. It can be pretty much anywhere that you can find people that would be interested in technology. Right, and our, our keynotes. Um, our keynote speakers at Drupal Cons are usually from other technologies that aren't Drupal centric, but they tie into what we do. Um, Jonathan um, Snook, uh, yesterday his presentation. I mean, I'm not sure he does Drupal specifically. I'm sure he leverages it, but you know, to have someone that's a pioneer in another technology that's utilized in our community is very empowering, and it draws more people. Okay. Uh, okay. I have one yeah. more thing. One quick one. Okay. I also have one quick thing. Um, one thing we've done a few times and probably should do more often is just ask the people who are coming to the meetup where they're finding out about it. Um, and often we have surprising answers. Um, and if there's new people who are finding out about it somewhere that you didn't even know, like some, you, you might have uh, publicity channels you're not even aware of with other people taking your meetup announcements and posting them somewhere else. And if that's bringing in new people, that's something to do more of. And the first step in figuring that out is asking people how they found out about the meeting. So real quick, so both Hootsuite and Meetup.com, they're, they're fee-based. So Meetup.com is 72 bucks for six months. Hootsuite is about 10 bucks a month. Either of those costs can be offset by asking a sponsor, finding a sponsor, and basically in exchange for them paying for that, you know, say, 
you know, on your main meetup page, say, thanks to, you know, insert company here for sponsoring our meetup.com account. It doesn't have to be some huge thing. And I think you'll find that if you have a local Drupal shop and you ask them for $144 a year for a meetup.com account in exchange for, you know, thanking them, I don't know any shop that's going to say no to that. So ask. Ask for the money, and you'll probably most likely get it. <laughs> Multiples. <clears throat> So is there anything you want to say about, you know, not discouraging attendance? I got it. Yes. So, so the question that Eric asked, in case you didn't hear, was is there anything that you want to do for not discouraging attendance? And I think one of the biggest things is making sure that everybody feels included, especially if it's the first time you've ever been to a meetup, it's the first time you've ever been in the community. It feels very isolating if you're there by yourself. So make, make sure that you're going out of your way to make them feel included. Walk up to them, say, I'm the organizer for this meetup. You know, how did you find us? What kinds of things are you interested in? Make them feel like you, you want them there and make sure that you know they feel comfortable. Um, one of the things that I've been including in all of the um, events and um, and meetings that I run is making sure that I include a code of conduct, making sure that people understand what that what a code of conduct means, um, making sure that they understand that as a speaker they're also expected to um, follow the code of conduct. Uh, and also, it really helps establish trust with the people that are in the community, especially if you're talking about people who are very marginalized in the community. So if, if your community is dominated by men and you have one woman that attends, it's very important for that person to feel um, safe and that if there is a problem, that they can come to someone and that they'll be taken seriously. Yeah, I'm going to add to that, and this is kind of a pet peeve. I'm glad Eric reminded me about this. Is You, know, you want to be really careful about if you have your meetup at a restaurant or bar, to make sure that you're not, I don't want to say advertising, but you want to make sure that even if it's at a bar, the focus of the meetup is not drinking. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that with our meetup, we, you know, we've gotten high school kids to attend to our meetup. And even if it's, in, and ours happens to be in a, you know, above a pizza place, technically it's a, it's a bar, but it's, you know, it's a pizza place with a bar above. Um, but we go out of our way, you know, not to talk about <laughs> beer or drinking in any of the um, promotion of it and to make sure that even though it's at a place called Ryan's Pub, you know, the focus is Drupal and you don't have to be 21, um, you know, the, the focus is Drupal and everybody's welcome. So. Okay, we have to move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, it's, it's, this, is, this is a hard one because it's so much to say. Do what we, we do? Have like two minutes left? Huh? <laughs> yeah, for the whole entire presentation. Okay. <laughs> take the mic away from me. You are cut off. All right, I'm cut okay. off. <laughs> Organizing meetups and events. How and we're going to each go through which, what we do for our events, even though we've kind of high level talked about talked about it. And this is also what we want to hear from you guys when we're done for the Q and A. We want to hear if you have a unique thing that you're doing at your location. We'd love to hear about it because somebody else might be like, "That's the thing that's going to draw people together. I want to do that." So we certainly do not have the corner on this market. There's so many ideas out there that we probably haven't even considered. So, these these are, whoops. So we ask people the different types of events that they do in very general terms. So, yeah, we are, sorry. Oh. I moved ahead too I fast. I thought that was the same thing. <laughs> so what I do, so, what, so the ones that I do, I mean, I go to the Denver and the Boulder meetups and I do presentations there and attend. Okay, so I don't go to the Denver one as much because it's you know, on the day I have my kids, but. Um, Scott will talk to that, but I go to the Boulder one, and I also, also run Drupal Ladder meetups. Um, if you haven't heard of Drupal Ladder, um, there's people talking about it. There's a boff later this afternoon about it. Um, it's kind of, we're trying to get more people to contribute to CORE, so it's one of the initiatives out there trying to attract people and teach them how to contribute to CORE. Um, so we have, on the third Thursday of every month, we have one in Boulder and one in Denver, and we do Drupal ladder meetups. And it teaches you really just even how to set up your environment so you could start committing and climb the ladder to doing patches. That's what I do. Uh, do me last because it'll build off. Because I, I mostly do conferences, so but then go. go. <laughs> um, I do. I, well, what we'll show you later is I think the most common type of meetup mostly. Um, and that's just presentation based. Uh, we ask people to talk about what they're doing with Drupal or talk about what they talk about something Drupal related. Uh, it's really open-ended, but pretty much anything anyone's excited about talking about, they 
just get up and tell everyone else about it. And that pretty much always leads into questions and discussions. Um, but we, we mostly start with presentations. Uh, we've, we, we also, uh, the, the scheduling of our meetup, Karen mentioned that the Denver meetup happens on Tuesday and that it's whatever Tuesday happens to be right before Thanksgiving. So in November, we tend to have very low attendance and we take that opportunity to do something very different. Um, every November we do Drupal games, which is like, we've done a variety of things, but it's kind of a jokey competitive Drupaling thing. Um, we've done like, you get three random modules, make something cool out of them. Um, and we've also done like, uh, what is it? Um, the one with the letters on the thing. Wheel Not, of Fortune. Yeah, we've done like Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> Wheel of Fortune with modules, na module names, um, and just people guess just anything that's a little fun and different gets people there who might not make it right before Thanksgiving. I'm totally seeing a Drupal Olympics logo with six Drupal heads. Decline. That is my idea, unlike the Drupal Curious. So I'd like credit for that one. So I'm going to talk, you know about newer meetups, because uh, I'm guessing that a lot of you are interested in either starting a meetup or have a, a new community. Um, the one thing that I recommend for that and that I've seen work in the past is um, keep the presentations short and always, 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 every month or every time you have a meetup, have some type of beginner presentation. Um, even if it's just co covering you know, best practices with taxonomy or best practices with content types, um, the only way you're going to attract new people is if you are presenting or giving them information that they can use. And a lot of people who are new to Drupal who are kind of feeling their way around, they don't have the confidence to know that I'm actually using this content type correctly. So by doing a half hour, very introductory, just very best practices, you're going to you know, encourage newbies to attend and encourage them to keep attending. Mm -hmm. So when, when we started the Florida Drupal user group, um, we, we had a very mixed skill set of the, what do we have, like 10, 11 of us? Um, you know, from all the way from beginner to, you know, people who have been using Drupal for three years at that point. So we, we staggered the meetups um, so that six months of the year, um, you know, every other month, we'd have a two-hour meetup which focused on presentations and um, kind of introduced new skill sets and new modules to to the attendees, and the other meetups across the month were, were four hours long, and we'd have two presentations at the beginning that kind of do the normal, and then we'd go through, you know, like a QA or a Q&A where, you know, if you have a question, if you're a beginner and you've hit a road, roadblock, come in, you know, pose it, pose your questions to the group, and we'll all put our heads together and figure out a solution for you. Um, it seemed to work really well because a lot of those attendees, you know, they were driving from uh, great distances away you know, hour and a half, two hours to get to that meetup. So they took it upon themselves after a few months to create a meetup in their area. Um, but to talk more about what I do uh, for meetups and things now, um, I think Emma, you went to her session. Uh, yeah, uh, she, she made um, correlation to three different colors of people, red, yellow, and green. Um, what were the? Yeah, so green, green people are very uh, creative, always throwing out new ideas. Yellows are um, filtering ideas and evaluating ideas, and red are the decision makers. Stop talking, let's make a decision. Right. Yeah. So I, I kind of fall into the yellow category, where you know one of the goals of you know moving around to all the different Drupal communities is not just to be involved, but to make sure that you know people in that community feel like Drupal is theirs in that city, and that they feel like they're a part of it and they're empowered to do things on their own. Um, you know, if if a meetup group needs more advanced topics, you know finding the people that are willing to take over and, and try and, you know, make a new meetup or something that's going to work along with what's already happening in their curriculum. You know, that's kind of what I like to do. Make sure that everyone's being served and that no one's kind of complaining and not showing up. You know, we want to kind of evangelize and that's, I guess, what it boils down to. I'm a Drupal evangelist. Right. So one other, um, before I go back to Ash, one other kind of meetup that we didn't actually discuss here that sometimes we do Sometimes in Denver, but more in Boulder, we'll do like Q and A almost. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's nothing actually planned, and people will come up and kind of have a discussion, and lots of you know, how would you do? And it's literally either light, not necessarily lightning talks, but here are the issues in the community right now. How do you do X Y Z? And we'll have a whole meetup just literally answering questions. But you can't really do that every month because run out of 
big, people really want to come to hear an organized event, but those are nice to throw in there sometimes too. So how many people here have organized a Drupal camp before? How many people want to organize a Drupal camp? Okay. All right, so um, one, of, one of the most important things that um, you need to have in place before you uh, start thinking about organizing a Drupal camp is making sure you actually have a really good community there as it is, because you do not want to be the sole organizer of anything. Like, I, I have been the sole organizer of um, pretty large events, and it's very stressful, and if you already have a job, uh, it's, it, it takes a lot of work. So making sure that your community is uh, locally is already pretty well established, that there are a lot of people that are already involved, that are are, um, interested and you've kind of uh, taken the opportunity, you know, maybe you're sick at night and you have somebody else that steps up to be the organizer, keep in mind who those people are because those will be great people that uh, will be able to help you out organizing something like a Drupal camp. And the other thing, unfortunately, is making sure you have more than enough people to organize because you'll find that probably like 60% will say that they'll organize, but they'll fall off the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. They'll show up to the events, but you won't hear from them. Um, so, so making sure that uh, you, know, you have your checklists in place. And the nice thing about Drupal camps is all you really have to do Thanks. All you really have to do is uh, make sure you have a space to do it in and making sure that you're reaching people. You really don't need anything else. People are going to come with the ideas. They're going to be the ones that are setting up present, uh, presentations and they'll be telling their friends. So making sure that you're reaching a larger community, getting more people uh, interested in coming, but really just setting up a space for them to give these presentations is all you're doing. Um, but yeah, making sure that a lot of people are involved and making sure that your community is well established so that there are enough people to help you is really important. Okay, so moving forward to where I tried to move earlier, <laughs> event types. So you've heard what we do, and so this is what the community came back with, what they're doing. Oh, that's why I got confused. <laughs> so we're getting um, mixed more than presentations, which is interesting, because I really thought that most meetups would be pre presentation-wise. <laughs> But we've got some that are just social. Literally, here's a meetup. We're going to meet once every month, and we're just going to have beers and conversations or sodas. You don't have to drink. <laughs> and sit around and chat. And it could be Drupal. It could, you know, how our conversations go. It could end up somewhere else. But it's the, it's the community mm -hmm. staying bonding. What? Am I missing something? Okay. And, presentation. So, and then there's others, which I don't know. I guess Drupal Ladder was kind of an other. So study groups. Mm -hmm. It's so presentations, question Q&As, and, and social. some social. Yeah. So like at our Denver one, we have presentations, Q&A, and then we go off to a restaurant and have another couple of hours of socializing and drink. So yeah, it, so it, it continues. So it's a scheduled, what, an hour and a half, two scheduled hours, something? Hour and a half. You usually end up spending five hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's not required, though. That's not a requirement. <laughs> the first part of the hour and a half, a lot of people leave. <laughs> yeah, we, so we do make a point to like have the formal meeting and then have have a distinct break before the like social time, so that people feel free to come to just one of those and don't have to do both um, because it, it's a long night. Also, our social is at, not at a bar bar; it's at a restaurant with a bar. So people do. There have been people bring their children. <laughs> and, and we actually do the opposite. Where we actually, we never start, if, uh, our meetups start at 6.30, posted. Um, our presentations never start till 7 because we want people to show up and if they're saying hi and talking, the last thing we want to do is stop people from networking. So we generally run two hour meetups. First half hour is just people arriving and talking and saying, hey, what's up, what are you working on? A couple of half hour presentations, sometimes they go long, sometimes they don't. And then the final half hour, which usually devolves into Q&A or just more networking. So I guess my point is don't rush a meetup. Yeah. You know, even though it's scheduled for 7 p.m., you know, let the presenter start at 7.20. And if people are talking, don't stop them from talking. That's, that's the point of the meetup. OK. You ready? <laughs> so this is like the rest of the information. So making meetups and events rock. So um, we all like to rock, and we rock really hard. So we're going to make sure even that. Even after lunch. Even after lunch. Yes. So we're going to make sure that you guys know how to do it, too. Um, you know, one of the things we always like to do, whether there's new people in the room or not, 
um, at, a, at a meetup is go around the room, kind of introduce yourself, you know, tell us who you are, how new are you to Drupal, what have you done, um, you know, what brought you here, what, are you interested in presenting in the future, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, then we kind of have stand-ups for, you know, job opportunities from people in the local community because if a newbie or even an advanced user that wants to change their scenery, you know, they, there's job opportunities everywhere for Drupal. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a scarcity anytime soon either. Um, you know, then we'll have our sessions, we'll do our after session thing, and then, you know, it's all socialized. And the, the networking that I really think, and you guys feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but a social event after every meetup is a really good idea, and you should always have one. Because it's the networking and the meeting and the rubbing of elbows and the, the loosening of the sodas or your beverage that you choose to drink, you know, that, that facilitates all the connections that you're going to make and, and strengthen your community with. Um, so that's it's pretty much, you know, a, a standard rocking meetup. Um, did I miss anything? Else? So one other thing, one other point is scheduling. Um, try to, I find that consistency seems to make the best. So every, every third Thursday, or what is it, every, what's the, the Denver, is every second, when, Tuesday? Tuesday? Third Tuesday, maybe? Third Tuesday or second, one of the, anyway, second I know what it is, it's on my calendar. Right. <laughs> every month, I know at the same place, same time, there'll be a meetup. I don't know what the presentations are gonna be, I don't know who's gonna be there, mm -hmm. but it's on my schedule, so it's, it's on the things to do, so I can schedule around it. If you, oh, we'll have one this month, we won't have one next month, we might have to have one in six months, we might do it on a Monday, we might do it on a Wednesday, we might have it at a bar, we might have it at someone's office, People need to have stuff on their schedule. If you want attendees, you want to get those numbers up, keep consistency. Right, yeah, consistency is very important, especially when you've got other meetups in, that are Drupal meetups in the same month from in other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to conflict. You want to, you know. And also, how, how soon do you want to um, schedule? You should probably schedule, I would say, at least two weeks, have it at least two weeks, but if you can have it consistently every month on the calendar, then you don't have to worry about it because it's there. Right. So, Karen, can you advance to the next slide? Well, hold on just a second. So, the, the um, more time that whatever your event or um, meeting takes, uh, the more uh, early you should be scheduling. So if you're talking about um, just a meetup, I would do it, I, like I like to have it, like we announce when the next one is um, at the meetup. So people know a month in advance or they know two weeks in advance, whenever it is. If it's something like a camp, I try to let people know at least four months in advance. This is something that people are gonna have to give their entire Saturday for. Maybe they have to make sure that they're not gonna be working or that they have somebody watch their kids. Um, and especially if it's something uh, like it's during the summer, a lot of camps are held during the summer. A lot of people are traveling around vacation during that time. So getting that put on their schedule as soon as possible is really important. Fantastic. Uh, one more point. Uh, so <laughs> I, I've had slightly different experience than Ash. Uh, I've found that a month ahead of time is so early that people like put it on their calendar and then totally forget about it. And I. I I've kind of moved around a little bit, but settled on what Karen said, like two weeks out seems to be the right amount of time to like, people can plan ahead for it, but don't forget about it. Um, I, I think that's probably a little different in every local community what the, what the right amount of time is, but definitely telling people, like telling people it's happening ahead of time is really important. Uh, there, I've seen meetups that are like, we're having a meetup tonight and that makes it really difficult for a lot of people to get there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree with everybody here and say that, uh, you know, plan out your meetups as early as you can. We're not talking, the, the key is not when you plan and announce it, the key is when you market it. You know, you wanna market it a week or two out. But for us, especially for people starting new meetups especially, um, plan them out as far in advance as you can and get them on meetup.com or GDO so that people who you know, maybe just visit their groups.drupal.org page once a month you know, will arrive there and see that there's a meetup either in three weeks or one day, depending on when they, they get there. So get them posted as early as possible, and then everything that you guys are talking about with timing has to do with you know, sending out an email newsletter, posting tweets. Yeah. So. so basically, we do, we do that. 
we do that. Oh, it's too late. You, you said you no, don't. No. no. <laughs> so what I was saying is like it's consistency, but then we uh, start talking about it, we announce it. So, that's not yeah. what I heard. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We're a great team. <laughs> Um, so one of the one of the things that we had asked in the survey um, was, you know, from <clears throat> the point of view of the attendee or the organizer, how many people do you think that are empowered in that group to take over or start their own thing if you are absent by chance? Um, the results seem that, you know, there's one or two people always in charge um, from what people uh, have told us. And then, um, you know, a very small number of people. I, I think most meetups, it's safe to say, are between 20 and 30 people. Um, and you didn't have zero on there. Right, zero is not an answer. <laughs> well, no, zero was an option, I think, right? That's what I was not Yeah, zero was an option. Wasn't? <coughs> I like that it's a lapsided peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Um, so uh, I think it's important, you know, to kind of gauge that, you know, at every meetup, you know, how many regulars are showing up. Those are the people that are probably paying attention and want to be involved. So if you see the same person showing up over and over, you know, asking questions, being involved, odds are you probably should, you know, hand them the reins at some point and say, hey, why don't you, you know, make the agenda or schedule for the next meetup, you know, market it and, you know, we'll help you out and we'll step back. You know, um, giving them an opportunity to present is also a really good thing to do because then they'll they'll get up in front of everyone and realize it's not that hard to talk in front of people. The, the other point too is people who've never presented before think they have to be the absolute awesome, uh, the perfect expert, and once they realize that you actually will become much more of an expert once you have to uh, present because you have to know the product this thing. I've gotten some people. I've, it's taken some real uh, arm twisting, but it's like just. Tell us what you know. Don't worry, the community will correct you. Right. And, and they, they learn that it's actually not that scary. Especially, it's a good way to learn to present. And the other thing is, uh, that's fine. Uh, the other thing is that uh, a lot of people, especially if they haven't presented before, assume that everybody already knows the things that they know. So a really great thing to do is, like, we keep a Google Doc of things that people want to learn about. And so we have this list, and then if something um, appears in the list and somebody else says, oh, I want to learn that too, they'll put a little hash mark next to it. So we can see uh, that, you know, some, some people want to learn about views. So we'll go and we'll ask people who haven't spoken before, like, do you know about views? Could you do, like, a views 101? And giving people the opportunity to say, oh, I just assumed that everybody knew about views. Um, but yeah, I've been using views for five years. And, and that's something that um, both gives them the idea and empowers them and makes them feel like they have something that's worth presenting. Okay. Um, another point on the same thing. Uh, an, another reason to get more people involved in organizing <laughs> is that if things go well, you'll probably want to have multiple meetups eventually. It, if you, we're, you'll, you'll end up with more people than you can fit in a room at a time. And uh, the people who help organize the first one are good people to start another one. Overflow is a good problem to have. So we need to move on, guys. So, okay. um, so now, how do you get one started? How do we start a meetup? I've got an area where there is no meetups. I want to start a meetup. What do you do? All right, so I actually have a bunch of experience with this because what we tend to do in the Florida community is every year at our big Drupal camp, we call out an area of Florida that doesn't have a meetup and shame them into having a meetup. And this actually works particularly well for us. Um, He's not lying either. Yeah. No, but, but actually the way we do it is, you know, we, we identify people in a particular geographic area. And this year, actually, it's Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida. Geography lesson for all of us. Um, and... We, you know, we've kind of developed a recipe that, that just works. Um, and it involves all of the marketing things that we've talked about. Um, but the key, I think, is you announce that first meetup at least a month in advance. So that, again, you have the people who casually might stumble upon it to see it and to tell their friends. If you try and like say, we're going to have our first meetup next Tuesday, you're going to have you know, probably three or four people. So have plenty of lead time. And then the number one goal at that first meetup and this is the part you have to write down, because this is the part that actually works, is <laughs> you go around to each person and say, what are you presenting? And then what are you presenting? And you literally plan out the next four, five, six meetups right there. And you, you pick a day, a consistent day. You, know, you guys are talking about the second Tuesday of the month or whatever. 
so that everybody knows the next six months worth, worth of meetups, the exact date, the exact time. Um, hopefully you're lucky enough to have a location that you, you can secure that far in advance, as well as the topic. And then you post that. You post it on GDO, you post it on meetup.com, you post it everywhere. And you know, at that point, when people show up and, and not, well, show up online and see these meetups, they can see not only what's happened in the past, but they can say, oh, these guys are organized, they have a plan moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it works, you know, it, it's been a magic bullet for us to get meetups off the ground. Anybody else? Okay. There's nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. <laughs> So what? what? Oh, go. No, 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 not yet. There's Actually, still you know more. What? I, I just looked at my notes. I have one other thing that we do as well. We, um, another thing that we do is we encourage local meetups to interact with each other as the larger community acts, uh, interacts. So in other words, we have on IRC a pound Drupal Florida. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but when I go to like into pound Drupal or pound Drupal support, it's a bit overwhelming, you know? So. We encourage local groups to, to start, you know, interacting with each other using the same tools and mechanism that the larger community interacts as a way to get everybody comfortable with those methods. So it's a lot easier for newbies to go into Pound Drupal Florida and talk to people who they met at the meetup last night than to go into Pound Drupal and try and, you know, try and ride the giant wave of text that's flying by them. Um, Thank you. So, you know, we encourage IRC, we encourage um, GDO discussions. Um, and we actually try and discourage email because in the larger Drupal community, most communication happens you know, on D.O or IRC. So the more comfortable you can make your, um, your local community using those tools, the quicker they're gonna grow into full-fledged Drupal community members. It sounds like we're pledging. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, to, to, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> to just add one, to add one thing to that, siloing conversations in between your, your groups in regional areas is very bad because one, you know, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand does or, or vice versa. Um, you know, if you can get the interaction between your, your regional groups, that community is gonna be more powerful because then the, they've networked with each other, they know how each other communicate. Okay, so great stuff. Um, one thing, one chart we did was how frequently do you meet? We were talking about consistency. You see that most um, respondents said they meet once a month. We had a few that were more than once a month, some that were less than month, once a month, and much less were other. And the other is every once in a while someone says, hey, let's have a meetup, and they do. Or once a year, or something like that. And we found and people want to meet. <laughs> once a year is not enough Drupal. No, it's not <laughs> enough Drupal. It's called the camp. Yes. Right. Tips and advice. Who was tips and advice? I think we're going to go round, round robin. We're going to go round robin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Start from there. Tips okay. and advice okay. that you haven't already given. That I haven't no already given? No repeats. No repeats. Okay. Tips and advice. Uh, blue hair helps. <laughs> so I see one person in the crowd already doing yes. it, right? Awesome. Um, and they know who you're exactly. Um, it, it's also, you know, the, the more you can do to pioneer and make other people feel accepted is, is really going to help because then they're going to feel ownership in that community. And if you're attendees feel the ownership, then they're going to want to make a change or they're going to want to be, you know, a substantial difference in, in that community. So, you know, give your attendees some love. Make them feel welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to break the rule and I will repeat, but it's all about consistency and getting, giving notice, yeah. you know, getting the events out there and giving people time to find them organically. Um, I'm I'm going to bring up a topic we've touched on uh, a few times, but haven't really fleshed out, um, and that's uh, food and drinks. Um, food and drinks are good and complicated. Uh, so I guess my tip is have them and have a variety so that everyone has something. Um, you don't want people showing up and not being able to consume the thing that everyone else is consuming, so that takes some complicated planning and it's hard to do, but try. Can I have it? That was almost really dangerous. <laughs> um, so, so for me, the most important thing is definitely making sure that everybody feels comfortable. If you notice that someone stopped attending your meetings, um, shoot them shoot an email and just say, you know, we haven't seen you in a long time. Um, 
you know, if, if there's anything that we can do to change the, the way that we're doing things, let us know. Um, making sure that you're, you know, checking in with your attendees to making sure that you're holding uh, the meetup or the event in a place that's safe for them to get to. It's easy for them to get to. If you live in a city that has a lot of public transportation, make sure that it's off public transportation so it's very easy for people to get to. Um, some people with children can't attend easily during the week. Maybe every now and again hold something that's on the weekend. Um, I definitely like to try and hold things um, in safe places so I don't want attendees walking alone in the dark in not super safe neighborhoods. Um, all of those things can, can make people uh, be a lot more uh, willing to travel, especially if you live in a large city. Like Chicago has a couple Drupal meetups, I think. And Chicago is a gigantic city. The traffic is terrible. Like there are a lot of things that would discourage you from attending a meeting in a very large city like that. So make it as easy as possible for as many people to participate. Accessibility. Yeah, accessibility, yeah. Um, I, I echo all of that. Um, definitely the again, being felt welcome. I remember one of my first meetups I went to, and I really was brand new to Drupal, and one of the guys in the community, I had no idea who he was, just some guy named Greggles, I don't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, comes up to me and he's like, oh, it's so good to see you. And the next time, like, he came over and gave me stickers, and I'm like, somebody actually recognized that I came back? And it was like, God, these people might be somebody I want to hang out with. And well, here we are five years later, I haven't gone anywhere, and kind of active in the community a little bit. So, um, so now She's we're- the product of what happens when you do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Yay. Yay. Um, so actually, now we want to um, open this up to you. We want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to move to the next slide, and it's basically has links of things, resources, and where you can get more information and how to give us a survey. We want to hear what you, what you liked about us. Um, when you go to the, I don't know if you've noticed this, but when you go to the sessions, right under the title of the session, when you're logged in, you have to be logged in, in blue and italics, it says, Sir, um, give us your feedback or something. It's, uh, my eyes missed it, so I'm just bringing it to your point, to your thing. But I'm going to put that up, and I want to hear from you. Yeah, and there is a mic in the middle of the room. Um, it's super convenient, I know, to um, just yell from your seat, but I'm hard of hearing, so if you don't mind using the mic, that would be awesome. And while, while a lot of this was about meetups, all of us have a lot of experience with um, camps as well and other types of Drupal events, so don't, you know, we encourage those questions. So that's our session and, and the ongoing discussion. There's actually a Google Doc right now. We might make a wiki. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do with it, but if you have things you want to know, things you want to tell everybody else, it's open to the public to edit that. Um, the, gu.gl.ccp0n, go there and I'm going to have resources there and you can edit and add stuff. Okay. I don't know who coordinated this forum or who did the survey, but you rock. Okay. So that yeah, out of the way, um, my name is John Weixner. I'm JPW1116 and I'm with the Western New York Drupal user group and it's not Western New York City, it's Western New York State where we call it POP. And very simply, um, we don't have a huge user group, so I'm going to give you two little nuggets to take home and maybe incorporate as policy, which I would really love. First one, we have instituted what I sort of came up with as a mini camp, which means it's less than one day. It started at 11 a.m. We had the first one last month, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., same kind of topic, same kind of break for lunch, everyone stays in the same room, but allowed people from up to two hours away to drive in. And it, they loved it. It was at a Aspen-like ski resort south of Buffalo. So we got people from Toronto, Southern Ontario, uh, Cleveland, uh, Ithaca, New York, and they loved it just driving in. So it was a little bit different from your typical urban meeting. It was way out in the hilly country. Everyone loved it. And it was captive because keep, keeping people in the room at lunch is all better than having people dissociate and then some may come back, some may not. So having a mini camp that's one day or less <laughs> um, is a format that I would like to see as an option among regular camps. And it sounds really easy to organize. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not that easy, but it's just smaller. It only takes a couple of people easy. and maybe a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to Build a Module, they donated some items that we were able to auction off to make our budget, okay? Second point. 
Uh, is there any way of coordinating in various g.d.o groups to have an external liaison? Because I know that the groups are supposed to be for their own region or for their own, you know, group of regions. But say I'm going to Vegas. I tried to find a meetup person contact. It was really difficult. Or even in Chicago or when I went to New York City. Sometimes I have captive time when I'm going there, and it would be great if one person were designated as the out of town or like welcome committee, like a hostel, so that you could have a spontaneous meetup if you're going to be in town and know the names of the people or so, the bars where or places where they would hang out. So I, I think that would that. be useful. I run into that a lot because you know we travel around all the different cities. Um, usually on the GDO page, there is an organizer section on the right above the events block, um, and it will list the uh, group organizers. So for Florida, I think we've got three or four of the miniature regional um, organizers listed for the entire state and the entire group. Um, Chicago, I believe it's the same way. Uh, someone from Fox Valley, a couple people from Chicago. Okay. Um, so there you can usually you know, use the on-site contact form to get in touch with them and say, hey, I'm coming into town. You know, actually, I did that. Is Jason Yee in here? Uh, there he is. I actually I changed my flights. We were here for a week in February er, in Portland because we moved here. I changed my flights because they were having a meetup the day after I had scheduled to leave. So, and I wouldn't have known that unless I had, you know, reached out and talked to him. Well, so. Maybe we could have a form, like a standardized form on g.d.o.s to say, hey, I am visiting. You just fill out the form and then it goes to whoever. Right. It's a lot easier than, than trying to hunt down the person. So that's my other suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You I can, had one you erased can, once when I did that because it said on, it was off topic. On so. almost any group on groups.drupal.org, you can join and just announce an event, and then it'll happen because you made it happen. <laughs> like okay. you don't even have, to, yeah, you don't even have to, you don't have to live there. You can just say, hey, let's all have an event. I would love that. Yeah. Someone came into my town. Yeah, that's <laughs> a Drupal event. I'm like, yeah. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I got a couple quick questions. One. And I was late, so if you cover this, I'm sorry. But um, what external tools do you guys use to like communicate uh, and advertise the meetups and kind of garner um, membership? So what, what our survey said, survey says, <laughs> is um, <laughs> most people use GDO. Okay, right. Um, the second most used is meetup.com. Okay. And then once they're posted, start tweeting and Facebooking and just talk, talking about it. Okay. So that's primarily what we do. What we do as a community, not us up here. Right. <laughs> That's what the survey said. <laughs> okay, cool. um, second question: um, Do you guys have experience with sponsorship? So getting like sponsors for food and you know other things like that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so um, the the easiest people to go to are people that you know. So the better networked you are, the more likely you are to get stuff. Like mm -hmm. I I go to a lot of different meetups and that kind of thing that aren't related to Drupal at all, just so I can get to meet people. Google will always give you money. Yahoo, Microsoft will always give you money. So if you can't get money out of, um, if you don't have, I don't know if, if there are any in St. Louis, Drupal shops. If there aren't, I'm not sure. Um, but if there aren't, there are other companies that would be more than willing if you know they can put their logo on something. Or you know, like I've had Yahoo give me 500 bucks and they're like, whoa, we'll send you 50 t-shirts. Like, so it's, it's pretty easy. Um, I, a lot of times I'll just reach out to them, explain what we're doing, explain, um, what kind of event it is and the kind of people that'll show up, you know, what, what their knowledge level is, the kinds of things that they do, uh, mention that they're professionals and whatever that they do. And people are pretty willing to give you stuff. Otherwise, speaking to things like local coffee shops and, you know, pizza places, a lot of them are willing, if not to give you stuff completely for free, to give you a really huge discount. Awesome. So, all right. One more question. Well, well I, I was just about to say, you know, if there's actually a lot of people in line, and we've got five minutes left. Okay. So we'll, if the, we could, the five of us will be out in the hall after. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Hey guys, thanks for this session. Uh, my name is Andreas, and I'm an organizer for Pittsburgh Meetups. And I have uh, two questions, but I only asked one. Do you guys recommend having individual websites for each of the Pittsburgh or Michigan Meetup or whatever? Meetup no, it is? no. <laughs> you should use. I recommend groups.drupal.org. <laughs> so just use that. No, no, not just that. You use that <laughs> and meetup.com and but whatever not else. Make your own you website. Can. No, no. no. Uh, and if there's anything you want to do that you can't do on groups.drupal.org, open an issue and. Because we've seen out. websites for camps, 
Oh yeah, that's, but well, that's camp, definitely for camps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a camp, it makes perfect sense for a camp um, because they have multimedia typically, either presentation slides or videos. I know Chicago, the the regular Drupal Meetup group there, um, they were recording sessions and taking video at some point, so they post all of those to their own site because GDO doesn't do that. But it's strictly complementary. You shouldn't segment your your community so that if they're looking for it where they think it should be and it's somewhere else, it's just going to confuse people. Also, advertise if you're doing a meetup or um. A camp advertise the crap out of it on GDO. Like what for Drupal Camp Wisconsin, we hit up Minneapolis, Iowa, um, all of the Illinois groups, Indiana, Ohio, anywhere we thought that people would drive in from. But be respectful Thanks. when you do it. Oh yeah, don't Holy be God. a jerk. <laughs> I'm not. I try not to be a jerk. Don't be a jerk is just a rule of thumb. <laughs> don't be a jerk. Hi, I'm David. I'm from Pittsburgh as well. Uh, Do you know we, this guy back there? Yes, All right. actually. I was say, you guys should totally start a meetup. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. All right. Um, no, well, so we did have a meetup uh, on, with a presentation on a, a really technical topic, and in the interest of including uh, people perhaps without the technical depth of the more experienced Drupalers, uh, we attempted to have a boff room separate from the main sort of presentation, solicit ideas from the community on GDO ahead of time and when they arrived at the meetup, and it just didn't work. Um, but I liked your idea about always having um, a, a sort of a scaled down beginner session at each meetup, and just interested in, in your, any other ideas you have on, on I'm a big in believer stuff. in don't segment your meetups until you absolutely have to. You know, keep everybody in one group. And that's why I'm, I'm the flag carrier in Florida for saying, you know, every event in Florida should be posted on GDO slash Florida. Um, you know, especially when you're starting out, you need that core group of people getting to know each other really, really well. And segmenting people out into, you know, either a BAF or having, you know, let's do a theme day or let's, you know, that's all well and good, but you need to keep everybody together until you have enough momentum or you run out of space. So do you have everybody in the same room for a brief beginner session and no, then... No, no, no. We do a beginner session and then we do something else. Okay, no, thanks. Hey, my name's Andrew. I'm from San Diego. Uh, I got a lot of ideas about everything you said because we've been do doing uh, meetups for a while. Clearly, we don't have enough time to talk about any of that stuff. We'll um, be in the hallway. Uh, but uh, do you know if there's a buffer? Uh, I know the buff schedule is completely full. Is there one for anything like this? Does anyone know? There's a hallway buff immediately after this. <laughs> Perfect. I'll be there. No, we, should, we should probably. Does yeah. the next session start at two or no. two fifteen? Two fifteen. Oh, okay. Two more. Okay. Uh, I'm Jennifer. I'm from Bellingham, Washington. We're about an hour away from Vancouver. We're also about an hour away from Seattle. So we started our own meetup uh, a little bit more than a year ago, um, and we have pretty good attendance now. Um, we started one thing which I think is has been really great, and it does split the group up, but um, Max Bronsmo, who's in our group too, is leading um, some people in uh, the Drupal ladder so that people can get more comfortable with the idea of contributing. I mm -hmm. definitely recommend that. It's really given some people who were really new a real feeling of empowerment, like, oh, wow, I can just jump in and get involved, which is awesome. Um, but I have a question about paying for food and drinks if you're not meeting in a place that has that kind of thing and you can't get sponsorship. Um, d does anybody, like, ask for a fee from people coming? I don't want to do that, but um, I also, um, as the group gets bigger, it gets more expensive for me personally because I'm just right. footing the bill. I can tell you where you can get some money, but you didn't hear it from Yay. me. I know, I know a guy. <laughs> no, so the Drupal Association... Yeah. has this thing called Community Cultivation Grants. Awesome. And if you go to Drupal, uh, association.drupal.org slash grants, all the information is there. I'll just say that one of the people up here is on the committee. No one knows, big question mark. It's a mystery who it is. Um, but the goal of these grants is to, or, or the mission, is to grow the Drupal community. Awesome. So if you can convince the committee that what you're doing is going to bring more people from outside Drupal into Drupal, we, uh, these people, <laughs> will give you money. Awesome. Also, so. ask for donations. Keep, have a fishbowl and say, you know, pizza is being provided for free. Please um, pitch in a couple bucks if you can. Okay, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Thanks. One, one of the beautiful well, things like, wow, in... I've just funded the next six months. Yeah. In, in Chicago, like, people, we, we always 
had uh, libations at the meetups, and there would be a libation sponsor. So someone would chime in the, the day before, a couple hours before the meetup, saying, hey, I'm bringing the drinks, so don't worry about it. It, and, sounds, it sounds like you're in a rural area, though, right? Well, not, not really rural, but it's okay. a pretty small, it, you know, it's like 100,000 people. Are there local people. Drupal shops so we have, area? A couple. We're, we're meeting at one of them. So, so we're at two. Yeah, let me. And I want to cut you off, but oh, I do, there was there's one more behind question. Me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, can we go on? Should, we, should I just ask outside? No, you should no, ask. Okay. You should ask. Um, <laughs> I, my name is Liz. I'm from Baltimore. We sponsor the um, Baltimore Drupal Meetup, and it's great. But sometimes we, you know, we don't have wall to wall people. It's really hard to get people to present, mm -hmm. and it seems to help when there are presenters to get more people to come. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for that. Um, don't make it an option. Uh, so we have, it, they've all agreed. presented already. Well, like, just just point at someone and, and say, what do you want to present about? Don't say, okay. do you want to present? Because no. everyone thinks they're not prepared to present, but everyone can present. Okay. So just make them do it. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, well, thank you. Don't forget to evaluate the session, please. <laughs>